In modern warfare, one of the most challenging weapons to counter are tanks. These formidable machines possess a unique blend of speed, armor, and firepower, enabling them to swiftly navigate the battlefield, endure attacks, engage enemy forces with their powerful cannons and machine guns, and penetrate deep into enemy territory. However, despite their might, tanks can be neutralized in several ways. Even infantry troops without heavy armor can effectively eliminate the most formidable and well-protected tanks when armed with the right weapons. In this episode, we'll examine various methods for neutralizing tanks, identify the most effective weapons for the job, and discuss efficient anti-tank tactics. A catastrophic kill, often referred to as a K-kill or complete kill, occurs when damage to a tank makes it permanently inoperable, typically due to fire or an explosion. Tank crew members commonly call it a brew-up, a term originating from British World War II soldiers who used an old gasoline tin with holes punched in it to brew tea. The flames emerging from the tin's holes resembled a burning tank. A catastrophic kill usually leads to the ignition of tank fuel and the detonation of its ammunition. A catastrophic kill doesn't imply the vehicle's crew won't survive. However, historically, the majority of casualties in armored warfare have been attributed to K-kills. This type of kill is also associated with the jack-in-the-box effect, where a tank's turret is blown upward due to the overpressure from an ammunition explosion. Certain tank designs incorporate blow-off panels intended to redirect such explosions outward from the vehicle potentially transforming a catastrophic kill into a firepower kill. A firepower kill occurs when the tank's main weapon, often a 120 to the 125 mm main gun, is rendered inoperative and unable to fire. This can be achieved through various methods, including directly hitting the tank's main gun. However, it's worth noting that the gun barrel diameter is typically limited to 8 inches or less presenting a considerable challenge to target it accurately. Firepower kills often happen unexpectedly in battle, as unintended outcomes rather than the main goal of destroying the tank. These events can greatly limit the tank's ability to fight effectively. A mobility kill, or M-kill, means a tank is stopped from moving. It can happen when a tank sets off an anti-tank mine by driving over it, or it may also result from being hit by a rocket-propelled grenade or anti-tank missile. This leads to damage to the tank's engines or tracks. Sometimes, they can be fixed later or used for spare parts. In rare cases, immobilized tanks might still fire their main guns even though they can't move. However, on an active battlefield, Tank crew, unable to maneuver away from threats, often abandon immobile tanks, removing them from the enemy order of battle entirely. The most straightforward method to eliminate a tank is by deploying another tank. Tanks possess the ability to swiftly maneuver across the battlefield, enabling them to respond to enemy armor advances effectively. Armed with a 120 to 125 mm gun is capable of destroying another tank and its armor that can withstand other anti-tank projectiles. Clearly, tanks appear to be the preferred choice as anti-tank weaponry, but due to their higher cost and their primary function as offensive weapons, tanks are not deployed for engaging other tanks. When a tank takes on a defensive role, it ceases its offensive role in a war zone. Up next are drones, which have emerged as highly effective anti-tank weapons in modern warfare. From basic drones with gravity bombs to advanced UAVs with precise guided munitions, drones are cost-effective anti-tank weapons. These unmanned drones have several strategic advantages, such as the ability to conduct precise and remote reconnaissance, target acquisition, and strike missions against tanks. Armed with advanced weaponry, drones can engage and neutralize tanks from considerable distances without putting ground forces at risk. Even a simple $3,000 drone armed with a gravity bomb can neutralize a $5 to $10 million tank. As technology continues to evolve, drones of varying complexities are likely to play a significant role in anti-tank warfare, offering a potent and efficient means of mitigating the armored superiority of tanks. During World War II, the use of man-portable anti-tank weapons 
gained prominence, which relied on a chemical reaction instead of sheer velocity to disable tanks. The American Javelin, Russian Cornet, and M72 Law fire rockets to carry a shaped charge to their designated targets. Upon detonation, these charges unleash a jet of plasma that rapidly burns through a tank armor within milliseconds. While some weapons, such as the Law, lack guidance systems, others like the American Javelin and Russian Cornet are equipped with guidance systems enhancing accuracy levels up to 90%. Typically, unguided rockets have an effective range of 650 feet or approximately 200 meters or less whereas the Javelin can engage targets up to 1.5 miles or about 2.4 kilometers away. The compact and lightweight design of handheld anti-tank weapons allows troops to saturate the battlefield, posing a significant challenge for tankers. Attack helicopters like the American AH-64 Apache and the Russian Ka-52 Alligator prove highly effective as anti-tank weapons. They are armed with long-range missiles featuring shaped charge anti-tank warheads, such as the Hellfire missile. Operating at low altitudes, these attack helicopters quickly react to intelligence regarding the presence of enemy tanks and skillfully execute deadly anti-tank ambushes. However, they remain vulnerable to surface-to-air missiles, as evident by the loss of over 60 attack helicopters, primarily due to ground-based fire during the conflict in Ukraine and Russia. Moreover, these helicopters come with a whopping price tag. Depending on the configuration, a single Apache Longbow gunship costs upward of $35 million. A tank destroyer, also known as a tank hunter or tank killer, is a specialized armored vehicle primarily designed for anti-tank missions. These vehicles are usually equipped with a self-propelled anti-tank gun or a missile launcher, commonly known as an anti-tank missile carrier. These vehicles are designed for speed, enabling them to swiftly engage tanks. However, their limited armor protection makes them vulnerable to tank cannons and artillery fire. An iconic World War II-era tank destroyer is the M10 Wolverine, armed with a 76mm high-velocity gun. A modern example of these vehicles are M1167 Armored Humvee, which is outfitted with the TOW long-range anti-tank missile system. Finally, anti-tank mines prove to be cheaper anti-tank weapons. Anti-tank mines usually need a lot of pressure, often hundreds of pounds to go off. This stops them from accidentally activating under the weight of foot soldiers or lightweight vehicles. Their explosive charges are potent enough to immobilize or even obliterate tanks. These mines are affordable to produce and can be easily manufactured, allowing for widespread deployment on battlefields. Anti-tank weapons are highly effective, yet they come with drawbacks. Tanks have endured not solely because of their firepower, but primarily owing to their exceptional survivability. Tank hunters must use tactics and proper utilization of units and weapons in combat to successfully neutralize these armored behemoths. The most successful tactics make the best use of the advantages offered by anti-tank weapons, while also exploiting the limitations of tanks to achieve their goals. For tank killers, Capitalizing on the strengths of anti-tank weaponry is the more straightforward of the two tasks. Weapons like Russia's Vickr missiles, launched from helicopters, can engage tanks from distances of up to 7.5 miles or around 12 kilometers, rendering long-range ambushes feasible. Anti-tank mines can be strategically placed along potential tank routes, cleverly concealed amid battlefield debris and shielded by anti-tank missiles. Infantry troops can occupy high positions in tall structures and launch their rockets downward at tanks, as tanks cannot elevate their primary gun sufficiently to retaliate. Anti-tank squads can employ flanking maneuvers, closing in on tanks from the sides or rear and using their portable weapons to target the tank's less fortified flank and rear armor. In urban areas, even Molotov cocktails can wreak havoc on these monsters. A well-aimed strike at an air intake can draw flames into the vehicle's interior. Tanks are still incredibly potent weapons when used effectively as they're extremely challenging to defeat on the battlefield.
However, if tanks were the only solution in modern warfare, there would be no need for infantry, artillery, and especially anti-tank units. In the future, it's possible that someone could invent a single weapon that makes tanks obsolete. Until then, tank killers must have a diverse set of tank-destroying tools at their disposal and the tactics to use them effectively.